Donna Edna Shalala born February 14, 1941, is an American politician who served as the United States Secretary of Health and Human Services under President Bill Clinton from 1993 to 2001. She was the president of the University of Miami, a private university in Coral Gables, Florida, from 2001 through 2015. Previously she was the Chancellor of the University of Wisconsin-Madison from 1988 to 1993. Shalala currently serves as Trustee Professor of Political Science and Health Policy at the University of Miami, and was President of the Clinton Foundation from 2015 to March 2017. Shalala was elected to the House of Representatives in November 2018 to represent Florida's 27th Congressional District. Early life and education Shalala was born in Cleveland, Ohio of Maronite Catholic Lebanese descent, the daughter of Edna Smith and James Abraham Shalala. Shalala's father sold real estate and her mother, one of the first Lebanese Americans to graduate from Ohio State University, was a teacher who worked two jobs and attended law school at night to become a lawyer at 41, and practiced for 50 years, retiring at 91. Donna Shalala has a twin sister Diane Friedel. The sisters played youth baseball where George Steinbrenner coached their team. Shalala attended West Technical High School where she was the editor of the school newspaper. She went on to receive a bachelor's degree in 1962 from Western College for Women. From 1962 to 1964 she was among the first volunteers to serve in the Peace Corps. Her placement took her to Iran where she worked with other volunteers to construct an agricultural college. In 1970, she earned a Ph.D. from the Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs at Syracuse University in Syracuse, New York. <laughs> <laughs> Academic career 1970 Shalala began her teaching career as a political science professor at Baruch College part of CUNY, where she also was a member of the American Federation of Teachers Union. In 1972 Shalala became a professor of politics and education at Teachers College, Columbia University, a job she held until 1979. In 1975, Shalala became the only woman on the Municipal Assistance Corporation, a group tasked with saving New York City from a financial crisis. She gained notoriety as the only woman on the corporation. Concurrently, from 1977 to 1980, she served as the Assistant Secretary for Policy Development and Research at the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development during the Carter administration. Shalala's first experience with academic administration came on October 8, 1980 when she became the 10th president of Hunter College, serving in this capacity until 1988. She next served as Chancellor of the University of Wisconsin-Madison at the time of her chancellorship, the university included 42,000 students, employed 16,500 people, and had an annual budget of $1 billion. She was the first woman to lead a Big Ten conference school, and only the second woman in the country to head a major research university. Under Shalala's chancellorship and with her support, the university adopted a broad speech code subjecting students to disciplinary action for communications that were perceived as hate speech. That speech code was later found unconstitutional by a federal judge. Also while Chancellor, Shalala supported passage of a revised faculty speech code broadly restricting harmful speech in both non-instructional and instructional settings. The faculty speech code was abolished ten years later, after a number of professors were investigated for alleged or suspected violations. As Madison Chancellor, Shalala, with then-athletic director Pat Richter, interviewed and hired football coach Barry Alvarez who went on to become Wisconsin's all-time leader in football wins, with numerous appearances by Wisconsin at the Rose Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Secretary of Health and Human Services 1993 Following a year serving as chair of the Children's Defense Fund 1992-1993, Shalala was nominated in 1992 by President-elect Bill Clinton for the position of United States Secretary of Health and Human Services. The Washington Post labeled her, "...one of the most controversial Clinton cabinet nominees." 
Her nomination went before the Senate Finance Committee in January 1993. At the start of her tenure, the Department of Health and Human Services employed 125,000 people and had a budget of $539 billion. She served in this role for all eight years of his administration, becoming the nation's longest serving HHS secretary. In 1996, Shalala was the designated survivor during Clinton's State of the Union address. She was also known for her fervent anti drug stance. She was the first Lebanese American to serve in a cabinet position. University of Miami Presidency 2001 Shalala became president of the University of Miami in 2001. She created a UM fundraising campaign called Momentum, designed to raise UM's endowment from approximately $750 million to $1 billion. The goal was later increased to $1.25 billion by the end of 2007. In February 2012 the University of Miami announced Momentum 2, the breakthrough campaign for the University of Miami, with $906 million already raised at the time of the public launch. On October 26, 2012, UM announced that Momentum 2 hit the $1 billion mark, on track to reach the fundraising goal of $1.6 billion in 2016. Drawing on her experience after serving as Secretary of Health and Human Services, Shalala taught a course covering the United States healthcare system every spring semester. On January 20, 2012, the Chronicle of Higher Education reported that Shalala had been paid almost a half a million dollars in 2010 to serve on the boards of three companies' boards, two of which were run by UM trustees. Shalala faced some criticism for her response to a nationally publicized custodial workers' strike at the University of Miami, which lasted from February 28 to May 1, 2006. Critics called UM's custodial workers among the lowest paid university-based custodians in the nation and alleged they were not earning a living wage. The strike prompted Shalala to raise wages. Shalala was also criticized for living in luxury while the custodians did not have health insurance. Shalala criticized union organizers' tactics, including a sit-in that she said prevented students from attending classes. In the fall of 2007, Shalala was inducted into UM's Iron Arrow Honor Society. On September 8, 2014, Shalala announced that she would be stepping down at the end of the 2014-2015 academic year. Topic: <laughs> Clinton Foundation 2015 to 17. In 2015, Shalala took a leave of absence from her tenured professorship at UM to volunteer for the Clinton Foundation. She followed her tenure as president of the University of Miami with being named chief executive officer of the foundation. According to the New York Times, Chelsea Clinton helped persuade Shalala to leave the Miami position, move to New York and head the foundation. Shalala maintained a home in Miami and taught part-time at UM while heading the foundation in New York. Shalala led the Clinton Foundation during the 2016 presidential election, in which Hillary Clinton was a leading candidate and the propriety of the foundation's activity came under scrutiny. In a September 14, 2016, interview on MSNBC, Shalala admitted that there was no question that donors to the Clinton Foundation donors had been given courtesy appointments in the State Department while Hillary Clinton ran that department. Shalala oversaw the termination of the Clinton Global Initiative during her tenure as CEO, as well as other reductions in operations intended to avoid conflicts of interest if Clinton won the election. She resisted calls by The Washington Post and USA Today to shut down the foundation entirely, arguing that, "...there are human beings around the world who would be affected by these decisions." Shalala left the Clinton Foundation in April 2017 to return to her full-time teaching position at UM. She was replaced by her former HHS deputy Kevin Thurm. Topic: 2015 stroke. Following a September 2015 Clinton Global Initiative event held at the Sheraton New York, Shalala fell ill. It was subsequently reported by a foundation statement that she had suffered a stroke. As of early 2018, she claimed to have totally recovered. Equals equals U.S. House of Representatives 2018 present equals equals. Topic 
2018 campaign In March 2018, Shalala declared her candidacy in the Democratic primary for Florida's 27th Congressional District. The district voted overwhelmingly for Clinton in the 2016 presidential election, but its House seat was held by 30 year incumbent Republican Ileana Rose Leightonen. In an interview with CBS Miami, Shalala stated that she supported universal health care coverage, but opposed a Medicare for all single payer health care system because she believed that individuals who liked their current employment based health care plans should be able to keep them. On August 28, 2018, Shalala won the Democratic primary. Shalala ran against Republican candidate Maria Elvira Salazar, a popular anchorwoman for Miami Telemundo outlet WSCD TV, in the general election. Her campaign emphasized her experience and sought to tie Salazar to President Donald Trump, who was unpopular in the district. The race proved closer than expected, in part because Shalala does not speak Spanish, the 27th is over 63% Latino. As late as a month before the election, polls showed Shalala either behind or practically tied with Salazar. However, Shalala won the election at the age of 77, making her the second oldest freshman representative in history. Other activities Board member Shalala is currently serving on the board of directors of the U.S. Soccer Federation. Shalala served as a member of the board of directors of Leonard Corporation from 2001 to 2012. She served on the board of directors of Gannett Company from 2001 to 2011, retiring because of age limits. The Chronicle of Higher Education has reported on the conflict of interest of Shalala sitting on boards of property development companies. Co-chair of Presidential Commission On March 6, 2007 President George W. Bush named Shalala and Bob Dole to head a presidential commission called the President's Commission on Care for America's Returning Wounded Warriors. The commission was formed in response to a growing outcry over the care of wounded outpatient soldiers. The commission included seven other members, ranging from injured war veterans to the wife of a wounded staff sergeant who suffered burns across 70% of his body. Demands for corrective action arose after the Washington Post exposed living conditions in a decrepit Army-owned building just outside Walter Reed Hospital and highlighted obstacles and delays in the treatment of soldiers who suffered serious injuries in Iraq and Afghanistan. The commission subsequently issued several recommendations for improvement of these facilities. Civic activities In 1985, Shalala became a founding member of EMILY's List, a political action committee that seeks to elect pro-choice Democratic women to office. Shalala served from 2001 to 2007 on the board of the Albert Shanker Institute, a small, three-member staff organization named for the former head of the American Federation of Teachers. She is an honorary board member of the American Iranian Council, an organization that seeks to promote closer U.S. relations with Iran. She served on the board of directors for Gannett Company. Shalala serves as a co-leader of the Nutrition and Physical Activity Initiative at the Bipartisan Policy Center. She serves as a distinguished senior fellow in the Economic Studies Program and the Engelberg Center for Health Care Reform at the Brookings Institution. She is also a member of Washington, D.C.-based think tank, the Inter-American Dialogue. Shalala also served as a panelist on the Blue Ribbon Study Panel on Biodefense, a working group of former high-ranking government officials and academic experts that put together a set of recommendations regarding the United States' defense capabilities against biological threats. Honors. <laughs> <laughs> On June 19, 2008 Donna Shalala was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President George W. Bush. In 2010 she received the Nelson Mandela Award for Health and Human Rights. She was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in Seneca Falls, New York in 2011. In 2014, she was recognized by the Harry S. Truman Library and Museum with the Harry S. Truman Legacy of Leadership Award. 
Shalala has been awarded more than 50 honorary degrees, she has been elected to the Council on Foreign Relations, National Academy of Education, the National Academy of Public Administration, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the American Philosophical Society, the National Academy of Social Insurance, the American Academy of Political and Social Science, and the Institute of Medicine of the National Academy of Sciences. See also List of female United States Cabinet Secretaries Notes <laughs> <laughs>